Hey, Artistic Humans, Paul Sizer here, and today I'm going to be talking with you about the art of inking, and this is going to be a continuation of the last video you probably watched, which was me talking about how to draw the head and face on figures. So since I had a nice pencil drawing, I figured this would be a perfect opportunity for us to go ahead and just roll this into talking about taking the drawings to the next level from sketch to inked drawing, uh, closer to final art. So as I've said before in other videos, it's not necessary for you to have the exact same technology that I'm using. Uh, I'm working digitally because it's easier for me to be able to record and show it, but anything that we're doing in this class can also be done with analog tools just fine. So pencils, paper, uh, markers, brush pens, micron pens, whatever you are comfortable with using, is absolutely fine um, no special requirements but like I said I will be talking about the technology that I'm using so if this is something that you're interested in becoming more of a digital artist there's tons of different ways to do it I'm showing you the tools that I use professionally and um, if you have questions please as always you can add those in the comments or talk with me in class the next time we meet so let's go ahead and take a look at the art of inking and why do we ink well the idea as most people know is that and what we've talked about in the classes before this is that the digital drawings or at least the drawings that I do um, I'm always going to be starting out and figuring out and getting things kind of perfected and, and, and dialed in um, in the pencil stage and then once I have the pencils at a point where I'm happy with them then it's going to be something where I'm going to clean up. So as we're taking a look at the digital pencil image that I have here of my character Simone from the Moped Army graphic novel, we talked about this in the last video where I refined and took a look at things, got some ideas, changed my mind on a few things, um, refined a few of the areas, switched some things around, and those are all the things that I did in the pencil stage because it was easy for me to make a change with that. So now at this point, uh, we're going to start out with taking a look at this and saying that we figured out all of the changeable things and we've gotten this drawing content wise to a point where we're happy with what, how it looks. Uh, we're happy with what things are there, the proportioning, the placement of things on the face, clothing, jewelry, accessories, whatever. We've done all the, the, the messy stuff of going ahead and going in here and and playing with things that we want to change and alter and all that. So the reason that we go to the next stage is that in looking at this picture, there's a ton of extra lines that exist here that we used for guidelines, uh, rough lines that we used for sketching, rough lines that we used for blocking in body parts, proportions, and getting uh, the interior infrastructure of how shapes are going to be looking volumetric. So at this point right now, our next step is going to be picking the best lines and committing those to the ink stage. So this is something that traditionally comic artists would start out with this and they would first do pencil drawings again to figure all this stuff out and then they would take indie ink and a brush or a pen and then they would go ahead and ink over their pencils. Now because we're working digitally I'm going to be doing exactly the same kind of thing but I'm going to be doing it with a little bit, a uh, little bit of an idea of that I'm able to still keep my pencils, but I'm going to be working on an individual layer where my inks can live. So anything that I do on this layer is going to be living above my pencils, and I will always have the ability to turn my pencils on and off. So we're going to use this as our tracing template, and actually I use the wrong word because we're not going to be just tracing um, as an inking portion of this, I'm going to be looking at this and assessing which of the lines are the ones that I want to keep, but I'm also going to be determining the quality of those lines, how thick, how thin, um, whether or not I'm going to be filling in uh, black areas, whether or not I'm going to be leaving things open so that I can color them later. So lots of decision making still goes into in the inking stage. But predominantly what's going to be happening here is I'm not going to be following these lines 100% accurately. I would say I'm probably going to be following them maybe about 95% accurate because at this point I'm still going to be making decisions about 
line quality um, and making small little tiny changes or refinements to this drawing as I'm inking it. Now, if this is something where I was inking somebody else's work, I would probably be a little bit more true to their pencils, not take any huge liberties, and I would be fairly accurate to how I was tracing. But because I penciled this, I usually pencil to a point where I know what I want to have accomplished, and then I can make a decision of whether or not I'm going to have this line determined by my pencil stage or whether or not I'm going to make a decision on it in the ink stage. So enough talking, let's go ahead and take a look at this here. So I'm going to be working on my ink layer here. And I have my brush set up so that I'm going to be working with the pen tool. And this is a um, pressure sensitive tool, so it allows me to uh, have a line that, depending on how I press on my Wacom tablet, I can go from thick to thin. So I'm able to have line quality. And the reason that I want to have that is because line quality is going to determine, again, a visual clue as to where the weight on a shape is and things that uh, give clues visually to how the shape looks volumetrically. So the general rule of thumb when you're inking is that things that are along the low side, say on the body here, on the low side of a body, are going to tend to have heavier lines and things that are going to be on the top parts of body parts will have a little bit of a thinner line and then generally a lot of times artists will do this where the outside most lines are going to be a little bit heavier but then interior lines will be a little bit less so there's generally an idea that when you're inking that you might have a little heavier line outside to sort of frame the figure to keep that all controlled but then on the interior portions of what you're inking you'll use a little bit thinner line so with here, I'm going to zero in a little bit here, and let's take a look at what I'm going to look at. So from this standpoint here, I have, and probably the first thing I'll do is, I'm going to go ahead and ink the contour of Simone's face here. And as I said, I'm going to probably use a little bit of a lighter, lighter line here, and then as I come to the bottom of her chin and upper jaw line, I'll be using a heavier line here. So let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, now I'm not super happy with that. I kind of, let me go ahead and try that again here. Again, the wonderful world of digital. There, that's kind of a nice, nice contour. So the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and do her ear up here. And when I say the difference between thick and thin lines, I'm not talking about huge differences, but I'm just talking about subtle ones. So that's, that's a fairly substantial line there but you can see a difference between the thick to thin here. And this is something that, again, digitally, uh, I wanted, I learned how to ink using a brush and uh, a pen that was flexible. So uh, in that same way, I have come to expect and plan that when I have lines that I wanna have them have, a, have different um, attributes. And so digitally, I want to be able to create what I know I can create with uh, a pen or a brush. So again, that's going to be something where these varied lines and so again, I'll do the headscarf here. Again, the bottom line for that is going to be a little bit heavier. It's kind of contours around. Like I said, I'm mentally just kind of taking a look at the different shapes and the different forms that I have and the lines that I've done to outline them and then I'm making a decision of which of the sketched lines that I have here are going to be the ones that are the ones that I actually want to maintain. So doing some of the fold lines and because this um, headscarf that she's wearing is gathering behind her ear here. I'm making these fold lines here come together in the same place where the, the fabric would bunch up. And a lot of times first what I will do is um, I will start to kind of do, again, work from general to specific. So um, as I'm picking out the lines that are going here, it's gonna be something where I'm going to probably do larger things first. Um, 
main body parts, head, neck. Uh, I'm going to do this line here that kind of determines uh, the edge of her shirt and how that kind of goes. Um, I've got her ear here. And like I said, I'll tend to s sometimes work kind of from like outer stuff to inner stuff first. So again, let's veer out here and I'm going to go ahead and ink. Um, I'm going to start inking uh, her braids, her dreads up top here. And I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to kind of start with the ones that are back here uh, because kind of just to warm up anytime when you're when you're drawing stuff it's going to be something where you're going to you know it's kind of always good to to kind of warm up warm up your inking arm and kind of do that now again this is something where you can see I'm being kind of loosey-goosey with how I am inking these dreads I have a general idea of where stuff I want to go but I'm not being overly worried if I'm not 100% designing the lines because I'm really basing this on the look of how these inked lines are going. And I know volumetrically how I want to have this stuff go. So the pencils are, for me, a, a fairly tight and fairly good indication of where I want to go, but they are not an absolute. So with this, I can begin looking at this and saying, well, I'm going to go ahead and I want to have these lines that she has for her hair. Um, I want them to look a certain way. I want them to fall a certain way. And I want the lines to create a pattern that's pleasing. So you can see that I'm using my pencil lines as a general guide, but I'm not freaking out if I don't Im immediately completely trace over them. Um, and as I said, if this is something where I was working on somebody else's artwork, uh, I would probably be a little bit more, a little more worried about that. But I'm using these lines as a suggestion for me because I know what I want my final um, output to be. So I get to be a little more, a little more freestyle with how I'm inking this stuff. So as you see, we've built the interior structure, say, of her braids here. Um, and I'm going ahead and, and moving in here. And the way I'm rounding these are staying true, but I don't have to, I'm not at a point right now where I need to retrace the lines that I used for structurally figuring this stuff out uh, because I've already done that work. So, so her shoulder would kind of go up there and I kind of had her shoulder here so again the 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 braids that she has are falling onto her shoulders and reacting to moving either to the front or to the back of those shoulders so I'm gonna go ahead in here just while I'm in the neighborhood and kind of do a little bit of tracing on that bring that bottom part of the ear up And then in the same way, I can go ahead and begin to sculpt those braids as they fall across her head. And you can see that right now, again, I'm generalizing and picking out the best lines. And as I'm taking a look at this, the lines that I'm choosing are moving around her skull and they are re-emphasizing the contour or mapping the contour of her head. So they are falling across her head. They're pulled back into the back. And then you see that the lines that I'm drawing up here are going to be going and moving and again reinforcing the idea that they are traveling along the top of her skull. And we talked a little bit about this last time where I said that the economy of line is always a good rule. So again, that's, that's what I'm doing here is that you can put a million lines into these drawings, but it's going to end up being just kind of clogged up and kind of messy. And the inking stage 
and why I really love doing it is because this is a time where, again, you're picking the best lines. So you're trying to get as much accomplished as you can with one really good line rather than with 10 so-so kind of mediocre lines. So again, let's, uh, while we're doing here, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of move those lines. I, I tend to work in what I would say is a very clean line style. Um, that's the artist that inspired me were people who worked very clean, uh, made very deliberate, graceful stroke lines rather than kind of scratchy, um, sketchy kind of ink lines. Um, there's nothing wrong with those, but just my personal preference is that I really like to have a very clean, elegant um, line for how I'm, I'm talking about the contour of things. And especially, once again, I might use a little bit more of a jagged or sketchy type line if I'm doing something where uh, texturally I'm trying to get across something that's, that's rough or kind of maybe a little more beat up and things like that. But I'm dealing with hair, I'm dealing with human skin. Those kinds of things, I think, tend to look a little bit better when you have, again, a nice clean line on them. And again, a, a, a youthful face. So I've got a youthful face, a, a youthful face in that I'm drawing with her. So I wanna have the lines be very elegant. You know, um, they're not, there's not lots of wrinkles. And as I talked before in the, the last video, the more lines that you put onto a face is always going to age that face. It's going to make that face look a little bit older. So since Simone is a young woman, I'm going to try and use as few lines as possible to get her face together, which leads us perfectly to the next thing. So as I said, with faces and especially with youthful faces, the idea is that I always like to try and get as much accomplished with as few lines as possible. So for instance, I have all of my kind of build lines here for her nose, but I'm not gonna render every single line for this nose. I'm gonna pick out kind of the best ones and I will usually, for most of the time on faces, I will usually just kind of, again, do the contour along the base of the nose, around the nostrils, and then maybe one or two small lines indicating the ridge of the nose that travels down from between the eyes. But I'm not gonna tr load this up because once again, too many lines, it'll end up looking like wrinkles. So with Simone's nose here, I probably might give a little bit, and this will be something again where the thick to thin will help to make this a graceful single line. Um, from the top of her nose, and then maybe just a small one that goes there. And maybe just slight, a slight one to indicate a little bit of the bulb of the nose. And then a tiny bit just to indicate that nostril and a small amount over here. So once again, the human brain, and this is kind of the cool thing with drawing and is brought out in the inking stage, is that your brain is really, really good at finding and completing shapes when it sees most of a shape. So once again, when we're taking a look at this, if I pick the best lines for rendering this nose, your brain is going to kind of connect the dots along this edge, along the nostril going up to the side of the nose, the ridge. It doesn't have to absolutely see everything. We're kind of genetically built to put together things from a very small amount of information. So the nice thing about that is once again, I can have her nose, I can give it the character that it needs, but I don't have to draw every single line to get it across. I can pick the best lines and my brain's gonna connect the dots and fill in the rest anyway. So that's kind of cool. So while we're in the neighborhood here, I'm gonna do again the same thing. Um, and a lot of times what I'll do with a mouth is I will start out, kind of do the shape of the actual opening of the mouth first and then I will go and articulate the lips. Now it's not absolutely essential that you show exactly the full contour of the lip. And once again, what I will do is, again with a fairly thin line, I'll kind of 
articulate that top lip, but along the bottom lip, I'm going to give a little bit heavier line because again, it's on the base of the mouth. It's possibly a little bit in shadow depending on how full it is, but that bottom line, again, the bottom lines on things will sort of have a little bit more weight. So I'm going to use a heavier line down there. And once again, I might just put a slight, slight indication of this ridge just above her lip there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right. Now we're to the eyes, the windows to the soul. So this is very important to, once again that we're picking out the best lines to get this across, but we're picking out the fewest amount of lines and just the lines that we need and not any more than we don't need. So once again, like I said, I will try, I will tend to try and make the eyes as elegantly simple as possible with as few lines. So to indicate, and especially with, especially with female eyes, which are gonna be a little bit more articulated along the top and might come to more, um, identifiable um, lashes on the edge, I always like to see if I can get that top of the eye in one single shot here, one elegant stroke. Let's have something where... And again, the trick with eyelashes is that you don't draw every single eyelash because if you drew every eyelash, then they tend to look a little stringy. And that's the same with hair as well. So you can kind of lump eyelashes together and it will give the idea of being, even though they are individual lashes, sort of more of a unit. And we'll talk a little bit more. I'm not gonna connect this across here because uh, I want this to be something like that. Let me heavy that up just a bit. There we go. I'm gonna do our other eye over here. It's the same thing. Oops. Let's do that. Let's try that more elegantly. There we go. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So I'm indicating, I'm putting these lines here to indicate the base of the line, but again, my brain is gonna kind of put this kind of connect the dots here. So if I want to have the the soft feel of not having a hard, hard line there, but just sort of the indication of a line, uh, I will leave a gap like this. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and let's drop in the edge of the iris and the pupil. And I'll tend to usually I'll usually use kind of a, like a white dot or I'll leave a highlight in the center of the eye. Um, and I'll fill this in because we'll, we'll go ahead and deal with this uh, kind of in a secondary way here so I can show you how, we, how, how with inking I would plan for highlights or things like that that exist in dark areas or like the black of the, the pupil. So let me go ahead and just sort of get that one over here. And again, I'll just... Just sort of do a little bit of cleanup. Now, even though her uh, glasses are going to be mostly covering it, I'm going to go ahead and indicate uh, and draw in her. Whoops, that's too big. There we go. Whoops. Her eyebrows. And once again, Eyebrows tend to be treated as kind of a single thing because if you draw them as individual hairs, they're just gonna look stringy and kind of gross looking. So uh, again, if we're matching, we're matching the level of detail that we have in the rest of the drawing. So again, once you kind of commit to how much detail you're putting into one thing, you need to kind of be consistent with how that looks on the rest of the thing. So it doesn't look like one part is rendered super explicitly and then another part is super simple. You want to kind of get everything again to, to kind of visually agree with itself. 
So I'm going to view out a little bit. Let's, um, I'm going to go ahead and block in uh, her glasses here. Like I said, the you know those eyebrows are falling kind of along the same line of the glasses, so I'm not too worried about that. But I think that they you know you can still have the idea or, or see that they kind of move in relationship to the glasses. So let's see. Here's the, the side stem. Let's go behind the ears on that side, and I'm gonna kind of fatten this up a little bit. Correct over here a little bit. There we go. And then that ear stem goes back. Oops. Try to do that this way. There we go. All right. That looks pretty good. So uh, I said I was going to go back and talk just real quickly about. Um, addressing some things with the eyes. So with the eyes, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a light source and that light source is going to produce a highlight, especially in these dark areas here. So I'm going to go ahead and change my pen from black to white. Um, depending on the style that you're drawing with eyes, if you're going to be going with a very manga influenced style, anime influenced style, uh, there's usually a ton of detail in the eyes as far as multiple highlights, multiple um, high, you know, shines, high shines, low shines, reflective um, shines. But the idea behind this is that you want to, the shine should always be in service to making this eye look dimensional. Not making it look like it's flat, but that it's actually a, a sphere um, that's in the eyeball itself. So I tend to be fairly economical and um, not put a ton of reflection into my eyes, but I do use the main highlight as a little bit of a directional thing so that it's pointing the eyes in the direction that I want them to be connecting with the person who's looking at them. So again, the highlight that I'm going to put in here, you can see that as soon as I kind of place that in there, it zeroes the eye that it's now looking really straight at you. Um, rather than the possibility of her looking slightly off to the side. So this is helping to indicate that that sphere of an eye is looking directly at the viewer. Now, additionally, what I might do, again, depending on the kind of lighting I'm going to be using or stylistically how I want to mess with this, um, I may put a secondary, like a smaller secondary highlight in there just to, again, it, it helps it look dimensional. Um, multi more highlights will also tend to give a little bit of feeling of it being uh, glassy or reflective or wet um, and so your eye is all of those things it, it has moisture on it so again don't I don't tend to go bananas with this uh, I think you can do a lot with a little and I think that that's a, a good thing as well so let's go back to black here so like I said a, a small amount of lines but you know, you need to be true to all the things that you're going to have. So, for instance, um, as I'm drawing this here, I am going to put lines for uh, indicating where the uh, uh, the top parts of her eyelids are. And again, just enough of a, a hint. I don't have to connect it down every single time, but just enough of a hint to understand that that's at the top of the eye socket, that that is, again, that these lines are curvilinear, so they are agreeing with wrapping around the eyeball or wrapping across the face. All right, so I have a few, let's get these little, little dreads here. And again, those might be ones that are probably like kind of stuck coming out from the star scarf there, but they're, they might be tucked uh, underneath the... part of the glass. 
glasses there. All right. Now, uh, I talked about last time, I, I put these kind of squiggle marks here just to sort of indicate um, how I would go ahead and possibly have like a pattern or something like that on the scarf. And with this, I talked about how I would have Um, that I wanted to have uh, that on the on the face I wanted to have a lot of thick and thin but for the pattern on the scarf I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of put these lines in but I'm not gonna go for a huge amount of thick and thin on these because since it's a pattern I don't want it to seem dimensional it's a flat pattern on fabric so I want it to have a little bit of a different feel than these other lines that we see that have thick and thin um, things to them here so but the other thing too is that as we're taking a look at this again this scarf has things that are where it's bunching up where it's rolling as it uh, gathers behind her ear it's rolling as it has a little bit of a lip on the top and the bottom so if I'm drawing lines on this I'm going to do things that again help to emphasize those lines So when I'm hitting here, you see that I went kind of contoured along there. Then when I got that fold, I stopped and kind of changed direction. So it's not 100% like essential. Like this is kind of a random, it's kind of like a kind of a tie-dye type feel. So it's not absolutely essential. It's just kind of kind of blobs. I'm not really that super worried about them looking like anything specific. But if I have an opportunity for those things that when they hit a line that I can have them change a little bit of direction, that I can have them do things where it uh, emphasizes or shows the dimensionality of how that looks, then that's kind of a nice, it's kind of, again, it's one more thing that's giving visual clues for how that uh, looks. So there's that. some fun here just so loose loose shapes doesn't really matter yeah but as I described to um, you see these lines are fairly they're fairly similar in how um, their their uh, thickness is um, not a lot of variation all right move on so yeah let's actually kind of view out so we've got We've got the inking here, and I can go ahead now and turn off my pencils and start to take a look at this and, and start to assess what, you know, if there's something that I want to uh, change or if there's something that I want to take, uh, take a look at. Um, there might be something I overlooked too. So, for instance, um, I didn't catch the, the back of her neck here. So, let's go ahead and go back to our pencils and kind of establish the, that back neckline. And then, because I see the edge of the neck there, now I'm going to go ahead and I will sort of fill in that empty area with braids that are in the back all right so this is if I was doing this on an actual drawing it might it might take a little bit longer but that's I think that that's like a pretty good that's a pretty good amount of time uh, that I spent in doing this so I'm taking a look at this and now I'm looking for again the balance that I want to see as far as how does this how does this look the weight of lines um, there might be certain lines like for instance as I'm taking a look at this this line up here is a little bit heavy this line down here is a little thicker than I would want it so again that might be something that I would take my eraser tool and maybe just sort of just kind of slice that off a little bit just to kind of bring it down so it's not quite as not quite as heavy I still want it to have some a little bit of feel yeah that's a little bit nicer uh, same thing up here I'll just take the eraser tool and just just sort of shave a little bit off of that that line I still I mean you can always add back to it so even if you even if you are erasing it or covering it up or digitally going in there then I might just sort of just kind of push yeah just kind of 
get everything to to agree. Maybe heavy that line up just a bit more there so that as it goes behind her ear, that bottom section sort of has a an equivalent feel. Uh, the other thing I was going to say too is that just in looking at her eyes, I'm happy with this. I think I'm going to go ahead and just sort of thicken up that that top of that eye up there. Yeah, I think that looks fairly. That looks a little more red. So at this point, when you're inking, part of what you're also going to be taking a look at is making a decision about uh, what the next step is going to be. So if this is something that I'm going to digitally color, uh, it's not quite as a not quite as incumbent on me to go ahead and fill things up with uh, like that have to be 100% black because I'll probably do that in the coloring stage. So I think with this, I have things that are, are solid black, like the, the rims of her glasses, uh, the pupils, um, her eyebrows, and then the contouring lines that are around all this other stuff here. So just for the sake of this, I'm going to just sort of close that off there, do a quick check for, yeah, it's a closed shape, so I should be able to tape up it go. There we go. Now, uh, that also brings up another thing, too, is, again, with digital inking or with analog inking as well. Um, there are times where if I do have a black area here, I can go in and I can add my contour lines, fold lines, and stuff like that. But instead of them being black lines, they would be white lines. So uh, I had a little bit of a fold on her t-shirt here. So again, I can go ahead and add those contouring shapes back in white. And again, just get the idea of folds and clothing, how stuff is going. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're pretty good. That seems like that's fairly close to what I would say would be done. Might be a little bit of, just again, a little bit of finessing. I might just kind of go in and might be a little bit of uh, thick, more thickness to the glasses here. So like, like I said, I'll tend to use the inking stage as kind of like a one more draft for what I'm doing because I'll make a certain amount of decisions in the pencil stage and a certain amount of decisions in the inking stage. Oh, and I talked about this too. I'm gonna, let's go ahead and get white in there and I'm just going to put the little, the little uh, connector screw that's in her glasses. And again, if I wanted to, like for instance, if I wanted to have like a, maybe a slight highlight on the top of those le those lenses or on the top of the uh, the bridge on the glasses, that helps to sort of again make it look dimensional. So yeah. So I think we're pretty close. I'd say I'm going to go ahead and call that right now. So there's our kind of inked drawing. And again, as we go here, we see the pencils, roughs, but we have the basic lines that we want. Inking is about going in, picking those best lines, and then through the magic of technology, I don't have to erase those. I can just get them going, and they are done. So yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's basically what I do with inking. Um, so if you have, depending on, again, the, the, the type of line that you're using, you're picking out the quality of the lines that you're doing, you're picking out which lines are gonna contour and make things look dimensional. So we talked about, again, going from thick to thin lines, having heavier lines along the base of things, heavier lines on the contours of the outer edges of things. Uh, having more consistent and thinner lines on the insides of things, working from the outside in a little bit. Um, if you're using patterns, uh, the difference of having lines that have a great deal of difference between thick and thin and then lines that are more consistent. How do they look? How do they feel? Uh, in what way would you use them? And in all drawings, just having a consistency or uh, rather an economy of lines so that you're not overfilling something so you have a little bit of breathing room too. So each different way, more lines is going to give one look, less lines is going to give another look. So it depends on what your end result is as to what kind of inking you want to do. So if this is, 
yeah, this is a good place to stop. So what I would say is that for your assignment tonight, let's go ahead and if you have a pencil drawing or if you have another drawing that you've done or want to do a new pencil drawing, like I did, like either of this or just on your own, do something pencil lightly. Um, if you're using pencils, a very light touch, kind of give yourself uh, enough so that you can see the details that you want, but then pick a pen, a black marker, a brush pen, a micron pen, whatever you like, and do an ink version over it. Do inking over what you're doing. And again, you, the fact if you're if you have lighter pencils, you you can erase them. So I would say for an inking exercise like this, might be a good idea if you're able to get heavier paper that's more like a cardstock or an index stock paper, something's a little more substantive. Then try your pencils. Again, very light touch. Not trying to grind in. Not trying to have the darkest, you know, most, you know, huge thick lines. Just lightly pencil and then do your inking on top of that and then just very carefully once you're finished with your inking you can take an eraser and just very lightly erase over the pencils or uh, erase the pencils away and leave the ink like this so yeah alrighty so give that a shot if you have questions again bring them to class tomorrow or put them in the comments of this video I will be more than happy to answer them and I think that's all we've got for today. So again, this is Paul Sizer from Sizer Design and Illustration. Draw every day, draw cool things, and I will see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.